Welcome learners. Our lesson is Indus Valley Civilization. We have already discussed the background and evolution of this civilization. And I have already mentioned about the different kinds of art and artifacts have been found in these sites of Mahanjodaro and Harappa. Interestingly, after the excavation, lot of materials are found. Among them, there are some beautiful artworks and artifacts which still stand as a wonderful example of our ancient civilization. Let us first discuss what kind of materials this Indus Valley artist has used. The cheapest and easily available material we all know is clay. They already knew very well how to use clay because they made a lot of bricks to build their houses, their pavements and also that famous great bath. So, with that kind of experience of handling clay and to give it a permanent life, we will see how they also use that for the expression of their creativity in terms of small toys, some household objects, some images and also some potteries. All these are made of clay. Since clay is not long lasting and it was very important to give it a permanent shape, a long lasting thing and they use terracotta, that oldest and most stable material for ancient men. Clay is very, very pliable and easy to handle. You can give shape simple by the pressure of the finger. This is one thing. And another technique that we use in clay that, that, that is potter wheels. There is a pin like thing on which there is a circular disc and you can rotate the disc in speed with some kind of technique. The wheel stand stable and you put clay on the uh, disc and you can manipulate it with finger. Other than potter wheels technique, another way to create something out of clay is slips. Slips means you take the clay, a lump of clay rather I should say, then put it on your palm and constantly you press it like this and you will get a slip or if it is a bigger one, you put it on the floor and same way you thump it all the way to get a thin layer of clay. Now, by manipulating that in different shape, you can create something. The third technique of using clay, simply you put the clay on a table on a board and use your finger to give different shape. There is two techniques you can use in this case. One is addition and other is elimination. Means to get a shape, you first take a lump of clay, then put your clay pieces on that to get a shape. And it is not desirable, then you with a knife take out the undesirable uh, part on the clay. So that way by addition and by elimination you are getting the shape of the clay. Since you take a lump of clay, it becomes very heavy. So in that case you can scoop out some part or core of the 
uh, sculpture or anything that, that you are making from inside. So that will make it lighter. This oldest technique was used by Indus Valley artists. Not only they were expert in that, they added their creativity and their impulse for beauty very nicely in their work. The Indus Valley artists have used that material clay not only beautifully but also expertly. They showed their skill in handling all the three techniques of clay modeling and then to make it permanent they put it in the oven, they baked it and so it becomes so permanent that still after 5000, 7000 years it has the same quality, same appearance without any distortion. We call it terracotta, one of the most permanent material in the art field. In this valley artists like almost all the folk artists were the part of the society. They helped the society by presenting their works. They are also of three types. One is simply decorative, second is utilitarian and third is ritualistic. Decorative means they made so many art objects, just a clay piece or a plaque to decorate their household or just outside the uh, heart they created some beautiful design to give a beautiful look to their heart or their houses that we call decorative. And we found such things in Indus Valley civilization. Second thing is utilitarian. In this case, they have made potteries, lamps, and not least but very important is the toys for the children. Children they like to play with toys and in those days there was no plastic or anything like that. So the clay was the main material to make such toys. So all these are the part of the utilitarian product that the artists made of clay. Third thing is ritualistic. Rituals means some performance for their religion. So all different cults have different kind of rituals to perform, to worship their gods or goddesses or whatever they believed in. And same way, the artists of Indus Valley civilization helped their friends, their neighbors, their own relatives by making these images of gods and goddesses. And the fourth one is very interesting that we will see very soon. They combine both ritualistic and utilitarian together. The very good example of combining utilitarian and ritualistic art is the mother goddess here we see. Mother God is, is not very big in size, but there is a feeling as if it is a very big one when we see the picture here. This is called the monumental quality. This small image can be blown up in a very big size without any distortion because it has that monumental quality. Next thing you notice, the utilitarian factor in this particular image. The f your eyes will go straight to the headdress or the headgear. This is very interesting. There are very elaborate headdress we can see here. In the top 
there is something which very difficult to identify because the style of hairdressing in those days are not really known to us. It might be a piece of cloth or some bird's feather that uh, bound together, anything it could be. But interesting part is two bowl like form on the two sides of the headgear is a hollow bowl like thing which can easily hold oil and most probably the Indus Valley people they use is as a lamp. So mother goddess is not only the image of the goddess but also in the same time it has an utilitarian quality because it is used as a lamp also. Now we will go to understand the beauty of the sculpture or the image. The image is dressed in a very small skirt. I will not say it is a skirt actually, maybe a piece of cloth is wrapped on the waist and when it is turned into sculpture it appears like a skirt. But to make it stick to the body. You see a beautiful belt is used. We do not know actually the what the material was used to make this belt, but it has a medallion in the center and two strips in the two side which turn into one slab on the left side. That means the whole thing is again designed in the back side also. So this is a very important and interesting dress that we see in this particular sculpture. Now you move to the jewelry. See the jewelry. There is a necklace hanging from her neck. The two beads on the two side which is covering her breasts and then a choker like thing in the neck. So all together we see is a beautiful piece of sculpture and that a creative quality of the sculptor of this 3500 years back must be appreciated. After the terracotta we will move to another material they used abundantly that is steatite or limestone. Limestone is a kind of stone which could be easily carved. It is not as hard as granite or marble. The quality of this limestone is so that even very intricate design you can carve on this. We see a priest head is made of this particular material means the limestone. There are a lot of suggestion by scholars about this priest head and its origin. You can see he is wearing a shawl covering the right shoulder. The shawl has a typical design which is called trefoil design. In fact, this trefoil design was very popular in the Mesopotamian and Assyrian culture. For this reason, some scholars suggest that this have the influence of the Mesopotamian and Assyrian art. In fact, there are a lot of contacts between the far uh, western part with India because we will see in the Mauryan style of art sculpture they are high polish that must have been the uh, quality which is brought from uh, this area of Middle East or Mesopotamia. The schematized form of the bird, straight lines are used to give the design of the 
or the motif of the beard. This is also undoubtedly another influence of the Assyrian style of sculpture. Then notice the eyes. They are sliced and long one. So there no doubt the suggestions of the scholars must be admitted that it has a lot of foreign influence when it was created by Indus Valley's sculptor. Again, though it's very small in size, but it has the same monumental quality. Beside the technical quality that we have already discussed, the trefoil design, the schematization of the beard and the slice shape eyes, the expression, which is the most important quality of an artist to infuse. Without expression, any work of art, especially portrait, becomes dull. And here the artist had managed to bring a very serene, lucid, calm expression on the face of the priest. In fact, we are not very sure it, it was a portrait of a priest or somebody else, but only for this kind of expression on the face, we prefer to identify it as a portrait of a priest. Now, another thing that we are going to discuss of the art of Indus Valley civilization. Use of metal as the material of art. There are lot of metals in Indus Valley civilization findings. Bronze, copper, etc. These metals were used for many reasons. Make the tools for carving, for weapon, and not last but the least for art. One of the most beautiful works in the world art treasures is the dancing girl. In fact, in Indian art, we hardly see any kind of human or female figure which is such lean and slender in quality. In fact, Indian artists since the ancient time prefer a more robust, plumpy and voluptuous female figures that we have already seen in Khajuraho, in Mauryan art and also in Konark. In contrast, this metal sculpture from Indus Valley civilization is very different. We can see not only the lean figure, but also the style, the posture and the face is unique in its appearance. Let us first start with the face. The face is not that sophisticated as we have seen in the case of the priest head. It appears more like a member of the tribal species. Most probably she was a dancer in the court and these tribal people used to entertain the higher status of people in the society. They are brought or hired to dance in front of them. The next thing you notice, the left arm is resting on the waist and the right arm is slightly and uh, just kept on the thigh of a bent leg. The arms and 
the hand, both are well decorated with jewels. The jewelry is bangle, long rows of bangles. This is nothing new in India. If you have noticed the tribal people of MP and also in South, lot of such female tribals, they use long rows of bangles in their arms that start from the hand and moves up to the upper arm. Thus, this style or the fashion, we can say it, is not new. It started long time back from the Indus Valley civilization. Apparently, the figure appeared to be nude, but we don't know whether it was intentionally done or it, it was to minimize the complicity of making a casting of this kind of metal artifact. But I don't think that they had any problem with the technique. Otherwise, the projected arms are not very easy to use by any sculptor. So, it was most probably intentionally done. But the greatest quality of this small dancing girl is his sense of movement. The time 3000 BCE, the same time when Greek art or Egyptian art was in the zenith. But it is very difficult to find such a sculpture, metal or stone with that kind of mobility in the attitude. Most of the Greek sculpture of that time is very much archaic in nature without much movement. And same thing about Egyptian art. But here we see how the sculptor had infused the movement in the figure. So undoubtedly it was one of the greatest sculptures in the world art treasure with such quality. The most numbers of objects that are found in these sites are seals. The seals are very interesting objects that were found here. They are a square in size, 4 inches by 4 inches or sometimes 2 inches by 2 inches, a different kind of sizes. These seals are made of steatite, a kind of gypsum. We can say something like of plaster of Paris, which becomes softer when it is diluted with water and gradually it hardens and remain in the shape for long, long time. All these seals have images on the surface of the seal. These are in low relief. That means some part of the image is projected from the surface of the tablet or the seal. There are different kind of animals vegetations and abstract symbols on the seals. But one most interesting thing, something is written on the top or in the side of these seals. In fact, we do not know what is written on that because these are not yet actually deciphered. These seals are of different kind with different images. Let us first see, then we will discuss about the use of it. Now, we see there are two seals here, one with a bull design and another with a figure in a yogic posture. Let us first see the bull. 
Art is not always to capture the actual appearance. Artists have their own imagination, own creativity. They want to express something from their images. They give some extra quality to the image with symbols. The bull is here is not actually a realistic representation of a bull. Something is exaggerated, something is minimized in this particular design of the bull. You notice the horn in the shape of a trident, almost the two sides of the trident. This is an weapon that was used by the ancient people. Then see the hump is schematic in nature, the wavy lines going downwards and it create a beautiful design. The head is little smaller in contrast the whole body because whole emphasis is given on the body of the bull which is the main source of power and strength of the bull. The bull is a very important animal in the life of the people of ancient time. So bull is worshipped also in the ancient time and bull is regarded as the vehicle of god Shiva. So strength and the power of the bull should be recognized in this particular seal. Because the seals were most probably used by the traders as their stamp of recognition of a particular product which is used on their merchandise. Scholars believe there are a lot of trade relations between India and Western world like Egypt, Mesopotamia, Assyria and other places. And the trading is so much that there is not only one trader. So every traders have their own mascot or symbol to be used. So here you can see the symbol of the bull is expressing the credibility of a particular trader. Now the next seal that we are going to discuss is very important both as ritual and religion. The figure we see here a person is sitting in a yogic posture, armed, stretched on the knees, the legs are folded and the head with a mask and a very interesting headgear of two horns. And another interesting thing you must notice, the figure is surrounded by few animals. In the right side there is an elephant, in the left side there is a rhinoceros and another unknown animal. In between the animals there are some scripts or writings which I have already told not yet deciphered. And in the lower part also on which the figure is sitting in a yogic posture, there are two antelopes in two directions. Some part of the seal is broken. Now let us see what is the importance of this particular seal. Many scholars prefer to identify this seal and the human figure as Pashupati, the another name of Mahadeva or Shiva. Shiva or Mahadeva is regarded 
as the keeper of the animal world. So he is known as Pashupati. The figure is also wearing a very unusual dress with V-shape uh, front shirt or anything like that and again bangles from top of the arm to the bottom. We have seen how the Indus Valley artist used different kind of material, stone, terracotta and metal. Now we will see how they developed the system of pottery that I have already mentioned is done on potter wheels. They not only prepared different kind and shapes of the pots, but also they decorated it beautifully. Here is one example of a jar. Now this jar is painted. It is made of clay and so far it was not baked. So it is sun dried pot. In this shape of the pot is elongated one with a little wide mouth and a tapered bottom and these are the kind of pots have been found in these sites of Harappa and Mahanjadaro beside many other sites of Indus Valley civilization. The unique thing of this pot design is its use of geometrical design for vegetable motifs. Each of the leaf is composed within a semicircle which is placed in rows with a perfect harmony both vertically and horizontally. Then near the neck there is a margin or line from this side to this side which has different shapes. And in the top in the neck side there is a tree motif with long leaves on the T sides which reminds you of the coconut trees. Now the combination of translating the vegetation or vegetable motif into geometrical shape and later to get almost a realistic form of the leaves on the top is excellent. The color is mainly one, a black and the surface color of the jar or the pot is retained. So many beautiful such pots and jars are found in Indus Valley civilization. They are either made the design with red on black on black of red. Another important find from Indus Valley civilization is their jewelries. So far we have seen almost all the human images either on the seals or on the sculptures are heavily decked with jewelries. Undoubtedly these people had a lot of love of jewelries which adorned themselves. They are made of different kind of materials gems, semi-precious and also precious are the main sources of their making of jewelry. This is a jewelry, a necklace we see here. The different kinds of jewelries were found in these sites. For example, here we have one that is made of semi-precious and precious stone. You just notice the design. They are alternative use of flat circular 
beads and also oval beads one after the other and this is hanged with three beads in oval shape with a protruding long string in the bottom. Undoubtedly they have clear sense of design and the jewelries that we find there have different kind of different form and unlimited use of designs and repetition of circles, semicircles, squares in their jewelry. So the last thing that we are going to discuss the toys. The children of every age are fond of toys. Since those days there are no plastic or anything, but they were clay, the cheapest material of making toys which could please the children of Indus Valley civilization. They created dancing monkeys, then the rattle cart which makes sounds and also some beautiful human figures in the terracotta toys. So learners, we have comprehensively discussed the different art and artifacts that are found in different sites of Indus Valley civilization. I hope it will increase your interest and curiosity about our ancient past and you will go through many many researches on that. Thanking you.